What's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Men of the House podcast. Coming today from the park on a Monday, sitting in the car because it's a little cold outside. But, um, yeah, it's an odd day. Normally I would do Wednesdays or Thursdays, but due to the holiday last week, um, I actually skipped Thursday. But, um, again another week in my life. Um, It's been a little crazy in terms of we had the holiday break and things kind of didn't go as planned. Um, My mom being sick, my daughter being sick, ended up with a double ear infection. And so that kind of put a damper on the beginning of the week with the holidays a lot of going to the doctor, picking up medicines, getting everybody rested and whatnot. And then, of course, um, I know on the last podcast I had mentioned our dog, Peanut, who's 17 years old and um, no longer able to walk on his own, no longer able to go to the bathroom on his own, um, have to hold him over his water bowl to even drink. Well, Wednesday, November 22nd, um, we actually ended up putting him to rest. So, um, Peanut's no longer with us. Um, That made for a very rough week, to say the least. Because it was kind of one of those things that we had kind of been preparing for a while. We knew that this moment was going to come. And we just kind of kept putting it off and, you know, my wife had called the vet and the vet was actually going to be coming in that day at 345 and I just happened to be at the gym and she called and she's like, you know, are we going to do it? Not, um, you know, even though you've mentally prepared yourself for it, um, it, when it comes time and the day's actually there, you're like, uh, I don't know. Is this a good time? Um, is there really ever a good time? Probably not. But kind of how we approached it was, we're like, well, let's go ahead and make the appointment. Let's go in and see the vet and see what the vet has to say. Um, see what's causing this pain, see what's causing him to cry out at night and whatnot. And um, take take the recommendations of the vet. So we took him in for an exam and um, he, he, you know, upon physical, physical examination, he had tenderness in the spine. His legs were crossing automatically, meaning that he had some form of some form of arthritis um and or he said those dogs um can sometimes get neurological issues um which can also cause you know kind of paralysis style functions where he's unable to stand his legs are crossing but he was in pain um he wasn't able to get up and move on his own walk on his own and pretty much just laid there, and, you know, the vet said if that were his dog, that he more than likely would put him to rest, so, um, that's what we did. It was pretty difficult. Um, my wife and I sat in the room and cried, of course, um, before it happened, spent some time with him, and... You know, that was the first time I've cried in a while. Um, It's going to sound strange. But, you know, the past three years have been crazy in terms of change and loss and whatnot. But um, I didn't cry when my grandfather passed away, nor did I cry when my grandmother passed away. Um, I don't know why. Um, 
but I did cry for my dog. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't know why. It could be considered strange, but, you know, the past three years have been all strange to me. You know, from being laid off to all the loss to looking for jobs, having jobs, you know, temporary style jobs, um, working at the Hippie for, it was almost a year, which I enjoyed, but, you know, having applied to 300 jobs or more, and not having one other than Uber. So, yeah, I would say things are abnormal. They seem not normal. Um, but in terms of that, I kind of think of it as more of a for me anyway, is I just kind of turned to faith, having faith, knowing that there's a reason for this time period, these, these three years and everything that's happened, how it's happening, there's a reason, just because I don't know what the reason is, um, it's irrelevant, you know, that's part of having faith and trusting is that the right thing is going to come along for me when it's time, when God says it's time, when the universe says it's time, then what is for me will come along and it'll happen. And so, you know, I try not to waste my time worrying about it so much. Um, but, you know, I can tell, like, my mom and my wife, who are always like, you know, get a job. Well, it's, I mean, I have a job Ubering. Um, it brings in money. It's flexible. Sure, it's not the nine to five that they're thinking of but it's a job I get money for it and the money spends just the same as if I had a 9 to 5 job and a bunch of rules and that money's been there for us to spend um, when we needed it um, it was that money that got my wife a plane ticket when her grandfather passed away. Um, so, like I said, I don't get it. <clears throat> I don't know why somebody with my qualifications and experience is having such issues and troubles finding a job. But like I said, I just kind of I go back to what I consider to be my faith in that what is for me will find me when it's time. And until then, my job is to prepare myself so when that opportunity comes along, I can dedicate and devote 100% of myself to that opportunity because I've spent this time working on myself, figuring out who I am, figuring out what I'm about, figuring out what I want, what I don't want, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, um, both for life and employment. Um, how do I want to live my life? Going to the gym 
exercising, which I did this morning, preparing yourself so you're healthy. I mean, who knows? I could end up in a job that I have to travel all the time, um, which is difficult. And you're exposed to a lot. And you're away from home a lot. So now, you know, these past three years, I've been getting to spend time at home. Spend time with family. Working on myself. So, when that time comes, I'm prepared. And I'm ready. And that's all I know what I can do. I mean, I can keep applying for jobs. And I do. Um, I see interesting things, and I'll put an application in and get a denial. But, you know, when you've put in 300 applications and not gotten a ton of responses, then, you know, you get a little bit jaded. It sucks. You walk around everywhere, and everywhere has a sign, now hiring, now hiring, but... You know, nobody's really hiring, or if they are, it's going to be something that pays garbage, and I'm not going to commit to hours and this, that, the other for garbage pay. So, you know, if it's all the same, then I'll keep delivering keep putting one foot in front of the other. This is what's working for me. It's giving me everything I need. Um, And I'll keep doing this and keep putting one foot in front of the other, keep preparing myself until that opportunity comes. And I'll be ready to seize it when it arrives. Um, You know? And I just ask for... You know, I pray for wisdom and clarity to be able to see the opportunity when it presents itself. To know that it's right for me. But, you know, I have the faith and I believe. um, My last job, it came when I least expected it. I forgot I had even put in an application and... That's how we ended up back in my hometown from where we were. But before that, the job I had left that I'd been at for six years when I got the previous job was also one of these. I applied for one job and the hiring manager passed me off to another department. And that's how I ended up in the emergency room, which I'm thankful for because I enjoyed that job probably a hell of a lot more than I would have enjoyed the job that I actually applied to. But, you know, the point is, is that what is for you will find you. There's no need to chase it all the time. Attract it. And what is for you will find you. And you kind of have to remain faithful to that. And the other part is timing. It's not our timing. It's God's timing. It's the universe's timing. We want everything now. It doesn't work that way. But even if you ask my mom or my wife, they go, well, it's been three years since you were laid off. But surely something by now. Well, I don't make the timeline. Is three years a long time? Yes, sort of. In a grand scheme of things, not really. It's a blip. So, you know, sometimes in order to not be left with more questions than answers, it's sometimes you just have to release it and let it go. Because I can guarantee you that the three years of not having a job, looking for jobs, doing this, and especially as an Uber Eats driver, when I go in places and I see some of the people they hire, and it's like, really, you'll give these people jobs, but I can't get a job? I mean, I realize for some I'm overqualified, but 
at the end of the day, if I'm just a guy who's trying to make some money to support my family, should it matter if I'm willing to do the work just because I have a master's degree and can look at spreadsheets and do project management? It doesn't mean that I'm too good to clean a toilet or deliver food or wait tables, whatever it is. You know, this is the time right now. These are the circumstances. This is what the universe and God wants for my life at the moment. So, you know, the best thing I can do is take advantage of it. Take advantage of the freedom it provides me. Spend time with my wife. Spend time with my daughter. Be able to pick her up. Meet strangers as I deliver. Try to smile. Try to be happy. Try to make their day a little bit. Um, yeah. So. Kind of thought provoking a little bit. And some of it comes from. You know. Thoughts of last week in the podcast, but then some of it's just as soon as um, last night, you know, comments of how late my daughter's taking a shower before bed and, you know, my mom making the comment, well, she has to go to school and, you know, you can come back and sleep if you want. Well, yeah, I could, but I don't. That's the thing. I'm not a nap kind of person. Most people who know me would know I probably rarely take naps. And if I'm taking a nap, then my body must be so tired that it's told me to take a nap. But no, I get up, take my daughter to school, go see my father, go to the gym, get ready to go out and deliver do this podcast, um, gonna go make some deliveries, then pick up my daughter, I mean, you know, sometimes I think, um, you know, some people would assume because I Uber or whatever that maybe I just sit around all day and do nothing, it's really further from the truth, um, I'm a very introspective kind of person, And so I do a lot of thinking, journaling, listening to podcasts, um, trying to learn new information, trying to um, enlighten myself. So, you know, for me, it's always input, input on what can I do to make myself better While I grind, waiting for the right opportunity. So, contrary to popular belief, I'm not out here doing nothing. I'm out here preparing my mind, my body, my spirit. So, it's like, there's going to be a point when it does happen, everybody's going to look and go, oh, I think it was something that happened overnight, but it's not. It's been a lot of years, a lot of hard work, a lot of suffering, a lot of good experiences, but a lot of bad experiences. Um, it's taken everything I've been through, everything I've ever done, every place I've ever been, every good person I've ever met, every shitty person I've ever met to make up the experiences that are uniquely mine and give me the point of view that I have. Um, but they also give me the love, caring, and compassion that I have for others. So you kind of got to... Take, you know, take with it what you will, Um, the good with the bad. 
So But needless to say, since I'm doing it from the car, we did not get the area set up for podcasting, but hopefully this week that will happen um, soon because I want to look at other ways to uh, see if there's some online stuff I can do for money. Um, Even though I enjoy Ubering and it provides content and things to talk about because you're out there in the world with all the crazy people. But, um, hopefully that's the goal. Remain consistent, put out content, get it on more platforms, and get the space ready so it doesn't seem as jumbled as my brain. Anywho, time to go make some deliveries, get out there and enjoy some people. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Love you guys. Peace.